Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver morning, now. Good morning, Big Square. Road to Root.com. I got some uh, video issues today, so you don't get to see my shiny face. <laughs> That's okay. My tooth popped out again. I got to get it fixed. Anyway, um, I want to talk about silver in the U.S. Mint. Um, for those who have followed my work for a while, you should know that the U.S. Mint is probably one of the biggest participants in silver market rigging through their derivative book. Yes, the U.S. Mint has a massive derivative book. They lost over $112 million last year, uh, or the year before last, um, in 2021. So I am like on the edge of my seat due to this. The U.S. Mint annual report is supposed to come out this week. Now, the idea of hedging, using derivatives to hedge the volatility of the price of silver, they don't do it for gold, only for silver. The idea is that when the price of silver goes up, the hedges lose money. When the price of silver goes down, the hedges make money, and that's how you balance out the book. So on years that the price of silver goes up, the U.S. Mint won't uh, recognize a gain there um, so because their hedges would offset the gain. But, I mean, it's really for when the price of silver goes down as they're holding inventory. Uh, and this is only during the time, I mean, at least it's supposed to be, only during the time that they're holding physical inventory. Uh, but here's the deal. Last, in the 2021 report, they lost $112 billion and the price of silver had gone down that year. So they are fucking with the messing, excuse me, messing with the derivative portfolio of the United States Mint, meaning they're, they're going in there naked shorting it. And that's why they lost money last year. If they lose money this year, because uh, 2022, let's, let's take a look at what we did for the year. Remember, also, uh, the U.S. Mint has an annual, um, the fiscal year of the United States Mint is from September 30th um, of each year. That's the last day of, of the um, fiscal year for the United States. So if you look in here, all right, let's, let's, this isn't the greatest, I don't know why I always go back to this, but, uh, oh, great, unauthorized. Um, if you look in here, so it would be from right in here, September, which is around $24, to right in here. So the price of silver went down during that time period. Now that, I mean, it doesn't come out exactly, but it shouldn't matter because the very moment that they buy physical silver, they put the hedge on, they short silver on the comics. And then the very time that they sell that silver, they take that position off so that they don't make or lose money on the swings of the price of silver. The amazing thing is they lost $112 million when the price of silver went down last year, or in 2021. That's pure, unadulterated fraud. Fraud, fraud, fraud. And I guarantee you it was Ventures Gibson. Ventures Gibson is the head of the U.S. Mint. Uh, they, they were going for a great year last year as far as the amount of, uh, or the year before last, 2021, when uh, David Ryder was the head of the Mint. And Biden kicked him out, and Ventures Gibson came in and pretty much stopped making eagles. And for all of last year, they made very few eagles, the lowest I, I can recall in history. 16, less than 16 million ounces of silver eagles. <clears throat> this is a year that Ventures Gibson said they expanded silver eagle production. So there's definitely something going on a lot more than they tell us. And that's the key. Hey, if you're going to play in the derivative market and lose money, tell us why you're doing it. If you're going to uh, hoard silver in inventory and not tell anybody about it, that is illegal. Not only is that illegal, it's unethical. It's unethical what the Mint is doing right now. I don't care if it's illegal or not. We all know it's illegal for them not to make coins in quantities to meet demand. It's unethical. It's not fair to the Mint employees. It's not fair to the customers of the U.S. Mint. It's not fair to silver investors. It's not fair to rig the market with silver, naked silver shorts. And if they're not naked, you need to tell us how you lost $112 million on your derivative book in a year that the price of silver went down. 
So if, if we have another loss, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out the Road to Ruta Army to attack Ventress Gibson and the U.S. Mint. They have a bunch of phone numbers we can call. I have no problem with Mint employees, the down below people who, who do the work. I love them. They are amazing at what they do. They make the most beautiful coin on the planet, the U.S. Silver Eagle. But when they're telling us, being told to stand down, don't make coins, what, I mean, did she fire half of the staff? Is that why she can't make more coins? Because God knows she's supposed to buy, pay whatever it takes to get those blanks. They buy the, the comics contracts, then they, they manufacture the blanks, and they're outsourcing that, mainly to the Sunshine Mint. Sunshine Mint expanded capacity, and the U.S. Mint is required to pay the most money out of all the Sunshine Mint customers. The U.S. Mint is the only one, only mint that is required by law to do that. So the Sunshine Mint should be charging the U.S. Mint up the, up the yin-yang. But they have to get the coins out in quantities meet demand. We all know that. I want it. So this annual, when the annual report comes out, probably by near the end of this week, I want the explanation of what happened. I want Venture Gibson to, to lay it all bare. If they lost money in their hedge book, that's, that's going to be a huge fight because that's just flat-out fraud, naked shorting the price of silver. But I want to know what her excuse is for not being able to make over 16 million silver eagles when her predecessor did that in the first couple months of the year before. We need to get David Ryder back in the U.S. Mint, if you ask me. Anyway, I'm keeping an eye on that. Um, here's a, a pretty good uh, analysis last year from SD Bullion of uh, what was going on uh, with the U.S. Mint. And they were talking about the, this massive uh, gain that the U.S. Mint, look how much revenue the U.S. Mint made on their, on their bullion program. Is this just the bullion? They've made $3.8 billion on their bullion program. Now, it is very clear from the language of the, the Silver Eagle law that they're not supposed to make a penny. They are not supposed to make a penny on the bullion. It tells, it, it lays out exactly what you charge. You charge the cost of the metal, the cost of making the blanks, the cost of uh, marketing. All that stuff is laid out in what you can sell the price of uh, one ounce silver eagle for. It's all laid out. It's very clear. Nowhere in that description is there any profit related to the U.S. Silver Eagles. So that's just another, another law that they're completely walking around. The U.S. men shouldn't make any money on, on the Eagle program. Now, the commemoratives and the, you know, the, the proof coins and all that, yeah, they should make money on that stuff. That's where, and that's why they're charging $50 a coin for a Silver Eagle uh, proof eagle. So if it's just that they're making money on, fine. But if it's a, the bulk bullion program, that's against the law. So I, I would love to get clarity on that as well. Uh, as far as cryptos, <laughs> crypto billionaires' subsequent deaths spark wild theories among the community. We all know that cryptos are knee-deep in shysters, fraud, all this stuff. Crypto is not the problem. People are the problem. If we stuck the Bitcoin, the original Bitcoin from the Satoshi White Paper, we'd have no problem. But people get involved, and yeah, I don't think these billionaires actually died. It's very easy to disappear with everybody's cryptos or, or your cryptos if you have billions of dollars. It's easy to disappear if you're a crypto person and fake your death. I think a lot of people have done that already, and I think more are happening. And then it's also easy to get murdered because of it. Um, because of what you did, if you were like uh, making fraudulent coins, like Sam Bankman Fried probably wouldn't even be alive unless he was in uh, some kind of custody. They have armed guards outside uh, Sam Bankman Fried's house. So, yeah, crypto people don't mess around. So, uh, yeah, I don't think, I would guess, my guess is that these crypto billionaires that are dying aren't actually dying. They committed fraud, now they're trying to run away. Um, so, cryptos are doing okay. You know, I don't look at price because it's the same as silver. It's rigged every day in every trade, and you can tell by the volumes. I mean, look at this ridiculous volume. $30 billion for Tether, which is half of all the Tethers in circulation. Tether's the biggest fraud coin. It always has been. 
And you know, a lot of people say, oh my God, if Tether goes down, then the cryptos are destroyed. No, they aren't destroyed. The fraudulent crypto uh, people are destroyed. I don't know anybody who, you know, it, if you swap Bitcoin for Tether, that's a taxable event, my friends, at least right now. Uh, that's a sale of a coin. If you swap Bitcoin for Ethereum, that's a taxable event. So, I mean, what people use Tether for is instead of having U.S. dollars, they want to keep everybody's money and cryptos in their exchange because they don't have all their customers' money and cryptos. That's why they, they do the stablecoin bullshit. And BNB, <laughs> the Binance coin, that'll be gone. But all the, all the prices are inflated of these coins, and they're inflated by the exchanges themselves. You know, Tether, Tether was, a, was the power behind FTX the entire time. They created 30 billion, 38 billion tethers and gave them to FTX in Alameda Research. Gave them. Because Alameda Research didn't have that money, but they ended up with $38 billion worth of tether, and then they gave it back, supposedly. <laughs> so yeah, that, the heart of that problem is um, within the owners of tether. I call them the crypto cabal. So keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of hurt left to cap into cryptos before they run. Um, I expect all exchanges to shut down this year. So I don't, I don't care if, you know, Binance shows Bitcoin at $18,000 or $180,000. I think it's a fake number for the vast majority of the people <laughs> trading. And, and they aren't trading in the you know, 17 billion range. These are high frequency trades going back and forth. Much of the rigging is done at the exchange level behind the scenes. Oh, we're down for maintenance. Bullshit. If you haven't done it by now, you should have all your assets in your own possessions. No coins on Coinbase, no coins on Gemini, no coins on Binance, nowhere other than your own possession. That's it. That's my take, though. Uh, people asking about the... Um, the Brunson case, yeah, it looks like I, I knew there would be a problem. See, there was a way that Trump could get the presidency if he was elected Speaker of the House, and I think that's what the good guys in Congress were trying to do. And then something fell apart, because if, if Trump was elected Speaker, I did a report on the private group about this. If Trump was elected Speaker of the House, then all you had to do was pass, the, you know, the Brunson case would have kicked out the president and vice president, and Voila, you'd have the new president would be Trump. Fix that problem. <laughs> uh, but they kicked the can. As soon as McCarthy, McCarthy got uh, announced as the head of the, uh, was it the House? So the Speaker of the House, um, I knew that can was kicked. So the Brunson case was not uh, picked up by the Supreme Court. Um, but the Brunson brothers are, are doing some kind of a amendment or a petition to reconsider is what they're called. So uh, this is from uh, Rowland Brunson. The petition was denied. We will now make our next move, a petition for reconsideration. Hang on, everybody. Can kick, can kick, can kick. So I knew when, when McCarthy was put in, I knew that was... But then again, he's put in, the first thing he's done is to ax, or try to defund the IRS. That'll be interesting. I mean, right now you're paying money to give to the Ukraine to, to wash it through the cryptocurrencies and back into the Democrats' pockets. That's where your tax money's going. Or to, it, crazy wars to kill people. Or FBI to invest American for the FBI to investigate American patriots. Um, this whole system's being funded by your tax money. So yeah, I think, I think the IRS should be abolished as soon as possible. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. I'll be back in full swing, hopefully. Uh, I got Jenny on Thursday, Jenny Moonstone. We missed last week, but we're going to do it on Thursday for the private road members. And if anything exciting comes up, I'll let you guys know. It's BigSquare, RoadToRoad.com. Bye.